Here we go. Hi everybody, it's Naomi here and we are doing our monthly live spark chat. Hey Sophie, hey Split Dream, hey Sci-Fi Bard. Um, this is so awesome. We're going to do this every month, the first Sunday of every month. We are going to, um, I am going to talk with a past episode guest from our podcast uh, from the Firecracker Department. And... Oh, I'm excited. I'm so excited to talk to my buddy today. I mean, who's kidding who? This is all just an excuse so I can get to hang out with my friends that I love so much. I'm going to talk with Kat Barrel, uh, find out how she's doing, what she's up to, and we're going to have a little talk about creativity and how do you stay creative when there's a consistency of our creation. If you haven't already, go on over to Firecracker Department, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts, and subscribe to our podcast so you can hear all of our um, podcasts. Hi, 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 Cleakers. Hey, everybody. Um, there's, uh, there's some cool ones. I know there's a lot of Erper fans in here. Lots of hearts on that. And, um, oh, is this cat already joining me? Is this you, cat? Come on. Oh, that's my background. There we go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can get Kat to join. I think you have to... Um, Kat, I'm sure you're watching this. I think you just have to ask for to join, and then we'll join you up. Um, but yeah, so if you haven't gone over to the um, podcast world, do. Firecrackerdepartment.com is where you can subscribe to our newsletter. And um, we have a private membership page over in Facebook, and um, you should join that because there's lots of things that are going on um, with our community, and uh, sure would love to have you part of it. Uh, let's see, who have we got coming up here? We will record this. Now, it doesn't always record for me, which is such a drag, but, um, oh, did I just cut, cut, cut? I have no idea how to join this thing. <laughs> All right, you got to... Um, Go to the, uh, ask for an invitation, Kat. You're adorable. Did you get it? Uh, I'll keep talking. You got this. Yeah, people are encouraging you. Um, send a request to be in the live video. I love it. This is part of like, um, oh, no, that's not her. Uh, I know she needs some tech support, but you know what? This is actually part of like firecracker. Um, all right. The invitation. I love this so much. This is so funny. The invitation. Oh, thanks Vicky. Hi, how you doing in England? Our, one of our core gals, Vicky Breer. Yeah, this is fantastic. You scroll up when you join and it should be a pink little button that says request to join. Um, so funny. This is really, really fun. I, I, I mean, this is part of it. In Firecracker Department, we don't always know how to do everything. We got to figure it out. Get out of the live stream. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Get out of here, Kat, and then ask to join the video. I love it. This is like the first time you're going live with a, another person on Instagram. Uh, and I will talk about anything while I wait for you, but take your time. Just enjoy yourself. Don't feel rushed. We're just chatting, me and all these folks here. Um, have you guys heard Kat's podcast with me? Oh my God, I love it. I love it. You guys are looking after Kat. <laughs> it's crap. This is so funny. No, I have before, but oh, wait, no, that wasn't you. Um, you got this. I know it's, I, I mean, there's something to be said. Oh yeah, the newsletter. Well, I did say, um, don't forget to subscribe at firecrackerdepartment.com to our newsletter because that'll um, be full of good thing, good times, good things. She's in real life. <laughs> She's true. Um, this is so funny. I don't, I mean, I don't really care. Like, you know, we're all, we're all here for you, Kat. And, uh, um, I love that you just sent me a text of it, Kat, but no. Okay, um, if you leave the live stream and then rejoin it, so leave, get out of it, and then rejoin it, and um, 
maybe, do I need to go on a phone call with you? I don't have another source of phone calls. Um, let's see, take a, why doesn't somebody, yeah, favorite color? Well, red right now. Uh, when you rejoin, it'll be scrolling out of the comments. Oh yeah, I have faith, I have faith. Um, maybe somebody can like send a screen capture of what the button is that she's supposed to push. Scroll through the comments, it's at the top. <gasps> You did it, here we go. Hello, hello, you're, you're, it's happening. Hi. Lord. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh. I had it before and I was like, I can't remember where oh this magic God. button is. I went out, I logged back in. Hi, Naomi. Hi, my friend. How are you? It's nice it's to see you. You really have a nice very, like, influencer-y background going on over there. Yeah, this is, uh, it's just paper. I just, I carry this wherever I go for ah. whenever I do this. <laughs> very, very heavy paper. Do you carry it in, like, a wheelbarrow? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's how important this is to me. But it also Great. is how I do some part-time rock climbing. Just, you know. Just to keep fit. Just to keep fit, Upper my friend. Strength, right? You're in you're in Calgary, huh? You're you're no, you know where I am. I'm in Burlington. You don't need to brag. Yeah, at my uh, at my parents' house. I'm uh, hanging out with them. I had a few days off, so I flew home. I go back tomorrow morning. Nice but to see yeah. your hubby. Yeah, see the hubby, see the folks. We made some pasta today. It was awesome. Did you um Did you take your puppy with you to Calgary? No, he's here. No. He's he's staying with Ray because it's just too. I work like I'm gone like fourteen hours, fifteen hours, I know. Hours, and he'd have to be in my trailer, and he doesn't do so well with change. So right, right. I mean, who home. does? <laughs> who does? But especially not Bernie. He was you just look, here a second ago. But. You look great. Oh, thanks. How's it been going in in uh, Winona Land? It's been going really good. It's been yeah. really nice to get back. Um, it sort of feels like we never left. It's really funny. But, um, you know, we all have our, like, neighborhoods that we stay in and that we like. And I love the, the area that I'm in. I know where all everything is that I want to go to, all my favorite restaurants. And so it's a nice – it's it's nice now that it's in a place where it feels like we've just – we just pick up where we left off rather than, yes. like, oh, my God, new place. I'm trying to adjust. New people. We have so much of our crews back. So it's a yeah. really nice. It's been fun. And the scripts are amazing. We've already shot two. We're going on to the next two starting on Tuesday and uh yeah so it's exciting it's is scary. there something that you do to click yourself back into the character um like is it mostly the the co like for me it was always yeah. the costume <laughs> like the costume yeah, yeah, the costumes help the hair helps for sure just like seeing the visual difference in the mirror um I think to like Nicole has an energy and I think it was more juxtaposed because I worked on a different show um, just before this. I was working for Hallmark for a while. Yeah. And so I felt more of the difference this time around because I could feel the difference in like my voice and what part of my register I use. And I never really consciously thought about that, but I've just become aware of it now coming out of something. And I think feeling the difference. It, yeah. that make, does that make sense? You must feel that way with your characters and stuff. Yeah, it's, I think for me, it's always been in like the dialogue, like the, the mm. scripts are so different and the mm -hmm. pace of whatever my character is. And, um, I don't know. Sometimes I can find, like, I was just in, um, the Disney zombies movie and yeah, so I'm in like came a, out. you went to the premiere, right? Yeah. yeah so nice. Fun. You look beautiful. Thank you. I loved the dress you were wearing. It was, it was sweet. You know, it's so funny because, you know, we do these like premieres, but this was for kids. So I was at home in bed by 10 o'clock at night Amazing. That's with like a time. thing of ice cream. It was like, <laughs> I'm pretty happy. That sounds, that sounds amazing. Did you watch the movie or had you, are you like a, I don't want to see it. Okay. No. And how was it watching with a, with an audience? Well, I mean, I'm a small role, but like the, I mean, the kids are amazing, the dancing and the singing, and they're all very sweet people too. Like they're okay. very, I don't know, like they're young, but they're very inclusive and aware of each other. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes there's an age group that aren't as aware because it's, you know, they're, they're 
Kiss. Because they're so true. incredibly self-aware. There's like no more space up here. For maybe, them. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that phase. Yeah. Yeah. So, but these kids are great. That's awesome yeah. to hear. I um, feel like kids, I, I, I hope in this era of like much more awareness around bullying and, and, and I'd see, I hope that the next generation is slightly more empathetic. Yeah. I think that I wonder you have to constantly be like shining a light on, you know, and mm -hmm. as kids get into places where they're challenged, like bullying and like any outside influences that might be negative to challenge them to be like empathetic mm -hmm. and, and oh yeah, I mean, self-aware of themselves, but also of people that they're dealing with. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I hope so. I hope it's getting better. I've talked to a few of my friends who have kids entering school and the bullying thing starts to come up and yeah. it's Oh, it's so hard. I don't it's know how so you hard. It as a parent. It, Were you bullied at all as a as a kid? You know what? I wasn't I had a brief stint in high school. I wasn't really in elementary school. Mm -hmm. Um but I had it really bad in college. And Which why was, was that like, so bizarre? Um, I think a few factors. I had switched over from another college and a, a friend of mine came with me and he was going through a time in his life. Like we were both at Sheridan and then we switched to George Brown. Okay. And um, we didn't really do it together, but we both sort of ended up not liking the previous program and then auditioning for this one, both getting in. Um, but I think he was going through a really... Um, transition-y time in his yeah. life and I think he was very um concerned with the fact that I knew sort of the old more like flamboyant loud outgoing version of him mm -hmm. and when we got to theater school he was really into being this very like serious well-read actor man mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I just think that he he was trying so hard to like shed the old version of him, but I was a constant reminder of that other self, maybe. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that's my theory. I mean, um, that's very. He was like my you. really good friend and my roommate, and then he just sort of turned on me and like made the first year of school yeah. really hellish, especially having to live with him. Like, it was just such a nightmare like ex excluding me from people and I'd come home and a bunch of my classmates would be over and it was I, and it was just and we it's in such a small program that um there was only like 30 ish of us and so being excluded from things or talked about behind your back it just got around so fast I know. and then I, I had guess... a particular teacher that was also an absolute nightmare so ah. he's, he's he's gone now thank god because he had so many complaints against him but at the beginning it was um anyways whatever yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I get it. But what did you do? Like, cause I, those kind of things, I feel like that still happens. Like there's still moments where I'm like, cause I'm such an inclusive person. I really fight to like, like Matt, Matt and I'll go out for dinner and suddenly there'll be 10 people for dinner because I'm like, like everybody. Like, yeah. 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 Just but everyone, so, everyone come in, which I love. I, I, I love that. Yeah. It's my jam. I just, yeah. I, cause I also know what it's like to be excluded. And so, do you, did you have bad beliefs? Of course, like we, yeah. we all, like I was number one on the hate list. Like I remember finding a list that said, number one, Naomi Sneakers. That's so, what, what if you were the number one as in the best one? That's very sweet of you, but no, it was like, who do you hate? Number one, this one. That's horrible, I'm so sorry. But what happened. did you do? Like in that, in college, what did you do to sort of get through this? Oh, fuck. I mean, I didn't handle it super well. I think it was, you know, theater school is such a like, yeah crazy but there's something online on twitter i responded to the other day one of the uh winona writers i think it was shelly scarrow had re retweeted it but it was a post from someone saying like we need to stop the culture in our theater schools of like the the like work till you drop i think it's i don't think it's exclusive to theater schools i think there are lots of programs yeah yeah that mentality especially post-secondary there's like horrible depression and suicide rates and students and, and it, it, it's 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 the just we're not teaching like work-life balance and I think it's very damaging and this thing in theater school is just like work till you drop as hard as you can as long as you can I lived like five minutes away Me from too. school so I could run literally like out of bed 10 minutes before class started and mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. then sleep there. Like I would find oh, like God. corners to sleep and yeah. I eat a potato for lunch. Like it was unbalanced. <laughs> it was unbalanced. But that's a really good segue yeah. into this topic that we want yeah. to talk about. Because okay. when I asked you, because every time we do a spark question, the first Sunday of every month, 
there'll be some sort of topic that my guest will choose. And you were talking about something that's in your sort of mind these days mm -hmm. about the about like when your passion becomes work. Yes. So tell me more about okay. that inspiration. Discuss oh, that. Oh, I think um, I think speaking of that, like waking, like grinding kind of mentality, I think it was so pushed into me that I had to be working because what we do, I think is a job that so many people desire. Mm -hmm. It's held on such a pedestal as being like this inc and it is for, for oh my God, we're so lucky. honest and amazing and true reasons. Um, but I think when you, when you work so hard to like, get the job then once you have the job the panic sets in of like i don't deserve this there are so many people who want this i better not like complain for a second because i you know there's 25 people 25 150 people behind me who would like kill for this job um so i think what i struggle with sometimes is the mornings where you get up and you're like i don't want to go to work today yeah and then because but everybody has those days. And I think for so many years, I got so mad at myself and I didn't allow myself to just be like, yeah, I just don't want to do it today. I just, I don't feel like, like doing the thing. I, you yeah. know, and, and you still do. Cause you, you still have do, responsibility. You still do. Yeah, yeah. Taking, You're not one of those it's like, like I'm not, day off is not today. an option. <laughs> but I, um, but I think it's unhealthy to like not acknowledge that it's okay Mm. for some days to not feel the creative juices flowing. I think it's really yeah. hard as an artist because there's this sense of this drive and sort of the muse, this elusive muse. And there's some days when the muse just isn't there. So yeah. you've got to just power through and find another way. Um, but I think the more what I've discovered is the more you kind of fight against that um, and, and berate yourself for feeling that way, it's very counterproductive because yeah. it's not oh my God. really helping anything or making it better. It's just sort of like, I don't know. I mean, what do you think when you wake up and you're like, I don't want to work on this audition. Or I don't want to go to set or I don't feel like writing. I'm just not feeling inspired. Yeah. I mean, it's different when you're not getting paid because if I don't feel like writing, nobody's like, Hey, keep writing. No, Cause it's my yeah. own writing project. Your own thing. But you are sort but. of getting paid. I mean, I think we, that's the other thing is you sort of have to think of it as like, that the big check that comes when you do a big gig also pays for your time to write yeah. to put yeah. food, lunch on the table when you take your break from writing. I think when we work in these self-employed kind of piecemeal industries where you're, you're just working project to project, it's, it's all. Mm -hmm. And, and so someone is pay it, you know, I think, I don't know. I, don't I know, know what you're saying. It's an investment. Yeah. It's an investment. Yeah. But I think what you're like, what I like what you're saying is that, if you don't honor how you're feeling, you kind of like, sh you don't, you're not authentic, right? You're not being true to yourself. So mm -hmm. like to recognize, like, I don't really, I'm going to go to work and I'm going to do my job to the best of my abilities, but I'm checking in that maybe I'm a little bit off balance. Yeah. Right. And then I'm lacking something like, then I'm kind of like, Oh, I need to hang it. Somebody called it. Um, I need to do some relationship therapy or something like that. Or when they needed to invest in their relationships. So they oh. get on Skype and they talk to their buddies and then they balance that out so that you can not feel just like you are in a, in a, a cycle, you know? Totally. And I think, um, being in that, that cycle, I think it's easy to forget the fun of it, especially if you're working like a lot of really long days and you're physically exhausted and mentally yes. exhausted. I think, I think it's really easy to lose track of, how fun it is. Yeah. Uh, and it's so funny because one day you could literally do, or I should, I could do the same scene on set as, a, as an actor, let's say. And uh, one day I'm like having a blast and we could do the same. I've, I've never shot the same scene twice, but it could be the same. And it's just the next day. And the, the scenes are relatively similar in tone or theme or challenge level or whatever it is. And, um, one day you're just not feeling it. And one day you're like, this is amazing. And so what's that about? So what do you do then? Like the days where it's just a job, how do you like, because you're a responsible person, you get up yeah. and you go to your job, but what do you do to sort of find the spark? I think focusing on, I mean, I think it's good to step back and, and the like realizing how lucky I am to be doing a thing that I love so much. And all, all of the, the, you know, checking in with, you know, knowing how many other people would love this opportunity. I think just 
that reminder. But I'm always very aware of that. I don't really listen yeah. to that very much. You're um, very great. You have a lot of gratitude in your heart. So much, it's, so much. And I think it's so important. Um, but I think just like, when you're like, I'm fucking tired and I wish I didn't feel this way. I feel shitty and I'm kind of in just a cranky mood and I'm hormonal and I don't want to do the thing. Um, I mean, I think finding, I try to find one thing, one moment in the scene that I really love. Or like sometimes you're working on stuff where you're like, this is shitty. Like I don't. Right. When you're in a project that you or don't you're believe in. Where you're like, ooh, this is a bit cringy, but I've got to say these words and do this thing. But and so. I think that then you find the thing. Like you you know, the when, I was, when I was at Second City and we do these shows and like, you, I loved a lot of the shows, but I didn't love all of it. You can't, there's, you can't. A, there's always the one scene that I'm like, oh, the one scene. But then you find the nuance within that scene that I'm gonna yeah. love. So yeah. something like going to set may be like, I'm not happy on the set, but I really like the sound person. They're really fun to hang out. So I'm gonna really That's like fun. invest in that and find yeah. like a deeper meaning Find deeper meaning wherever you can, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Or find that, like, if you're working on stuff that's a little bit, let's say, lighter mm -hmm. or doesn't have quite so, yeah, and doesn't have quite so much depth to it. There's not as many layers. There's not as much to dig into artistically. Yeah. Now, if you're doing, or like, maybe you're shooting a commercial or you doing, like, I don't know what it is, something where it's, it's like, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, but it's all part of this kind of career. Yeah. And I think you got to find like that one little bit of it, the one part of the scene or the one thing that you're writing that kind of, and when you don't, I think you got to do other stuff. Yeah. So what do you do? I'm not like, I know Winona is very fulfilling because it's mm -hmm. very satisfying. It's on so many levels. because it's like such great writing. But yeah. And the Winona's, people like, yeah. so then do you have like something that you go home and be like, cause I know you're, you also write. Uh, mm -hmm. And you're also an artist on so many other levels. Do you have something like that that sort of kicks it in? I'm doing the artist's way right now too. So Are that's you? Really I like... love the artist's way. Yeah. Are you doing your morning papers? Every morning. Yeah. Did you? Do I it? had so many morning papers that were like, "Fuck this! I don't want to fucking get out of bed. I fucking hate this shit. This is such yeah. bullshit. This is never gonna help." Like so much <laughs> negativity that flowed out of me. But that's part of it, right? Yeah. It's like you gotta get out, that out and out of the way. And I can't read my own writing, so it's perfect because I just kind of write. Oh, like, you don't write, even write, go write, back. Write, yeah, because you're not supposed to read them. No, in fact, they said no. somewhere like you're supposed to burn them. I don't think I'll burn them, but I think Ooh, you it'll be really spotted. hard to read them again because I can't <laughs> yeah. read my own writing. So, do you? What are you? What are you doing? Like, because yeah, so because Winona really shoots guys, for a long time too. It does. We shoot till the middle of May. Yeah, she's quite a long and then we've got um, uh, some really exciting like a very big con schedule coming up, which is going to be amazing and lots of traveling, but just lots of like, um, very, you know, focusing on the show and the storyline. And I think for me, what I found is I need to step out of it and do other creative things. And it, for so long, that was like, well, I'm gonna write and I'm gonna create stuff or I'm gonna direct something. And I still do that. But then I found I got just burnt out in general with yeah. like film industry. I was just like, I, I'm, I'm so into this. And I think it's because my partner's also in the industry. So there, there are moments at the dinner table where we're like, okay, no more, no more shop talk. Like, let's talk about something else other than work or the dog. What? Like, it has what to be is something like, It's such our passion. I, it's we have hard because it's your passion and then you double it. Right. Yeah. And then so because, and a lot of our friends, like you guys, like so many of our friends are in the industry. But I think for me, because I'm such a like tactile creative person, I love, I did like a little leather working thing years ago. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I did that. My thing is, I get, my mom's like, why don't you just knit or do something that's more contained that you can put in a bag? And I know, because it's leather work. <laughs> exactly. Everything I'm into is like, I got to get a studio space and I have all these tools and it's like $1,000 of startup costs because I have to buy all these really expensive materials and like, not 1000 but you know what I mean? Like, I have to invest in it. Um, but I'm just not a, I don't like, I don't like anything where I have to follow a pattern very much. Right. And I like I more it. like free flowing things, but, uh, I really need to work with my hands. So this is, I actually did a really awesome, um, Dominique, do you know Dominique who works on my Not well, but yeah. No, yeah, I know but it. you, yeah. Um, she and I did like a yoga, not a retreat. We did sort of a yoga evening where it was, um, it was for Chinese New Year's. It was like a manifesting thing. Oh, like a Reiki? No, no, it was more of like a really intense, so funny, because I just had like a normal bra on, 
and I go and, and she was she was like I have an extra sports bra do you want to do you want to wear it because I don't know if it's gonna be I was like oh I don't think I was expecting this like meditative right. slow and I'm so glad I changed because this girl was so intense we were like jumping and screaming and like wow. flinging our bodies around just to like loosen up I think and release the energy um but it was so funny because I turned to her after and I was like god it's so much for my assumption of this being like a tranquil a calm, like... experience lavender was, oil spring sprayed all the spray oh there were there was things it was lovely i've actually never done one of those big it was like 75 people there and great in this huge event space i've never done anything like that it was really great so anyways i'm getting off track but the second part of it was to describe so they played this beautiful music and we closed our eyes and then we had to envision our perfect day so from the second you open right. your eyes to the second they close, like what is the perfect day? If it involves work grade, it doesn't have like any day. It could be a weekend. It could be like, who's there? What are you doing? Where are you? What time of year is it? Like every detail. Yeah. And then we had to journal the day. So just write out the day. Love it. And then what we did after that is we pulled out the five kind of main themes. So there could be like food came up, like really farm fresh food came up a lot for me and the sunshine and being in the garden and like working with my hands and gardening with my mom and hiking. I'm not really a hiking person. Like I would not consider, I'm not a camper. I would not consider myself that type of person at all. But that came up a lot for me, like going hiking mm -hmm. with the dog and, and, and just a lot of family and, and things that if I had gone at it in more of a way of of um thinking about well like what are the five most important things to me it might not have come up so then we had to write the five kind of common themes that came out and then we had to rate them on a scale of one to ten of how present they are in our lives right now yeah so for me like a big one was being like with with ray and with my family and family but i'm i my family life is wonderful and I'm spending lots of time with my family. And so I feel like very fulfilled in that aspect. So that was like, you know, a 10, but then things like nature was very low for me, mm -hmm. but it was funny because I realized it was on my list. So then we took the two lowest things and we had to brainstorm what we could do to fill those tanks up. Yeah. It was really great. And uh, one of my other one was working with my hands. Yeah. And so I've sort of, I don't know how, how much of this I'll get to do in Calgary, but Calgary obviously is like cowboy country. Yeah. And so um, I'd love to, I wanted to start working with hats and remolding hats and decorating oh, hats goodness. and just something because I think I need to be creative. Yeah. You know, outside of our industry. Yeah. And working with your hands because mm -hmm. then you can be like see what you've created. Whereas what we're doing, you sort of like step back and it's sort of a little like, bit less tangible. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And you're off your computer. Yeah. Off your yeah. computer. That's a big one too. I often go through phases where I'll delete, I just delete Instagram off my phone for like three days, four days. Yeah. Um, just because I find it's one of those things where I'm, I'm just mindlessly scrolling when I have oh, five yeah. minutes of downtime. And I just think, gosh, if I could just accumulate all that downtime and funnel it into something that's going to feed me, it would be really helpful. I know. So. I know. That's a good, and it's a muscle, right? Like somebody was just talking about like, how do you do this? How do you, but I think it's a muscle that if you kind of start to exercise, we'll get better at it. Like after this is over, let's um, write that little instructions of what you went through. Yeah. And we can include it on our Instagram so people can sort of sure. talk about their favorite day. Like I would love to encourage people to, to cool. seize that. Like I, I think you're right, like nature's big, getting off the computer's big, things like that. I think it's really, really good. And leather's great. I worked, I did um, a mask making workshop in leather. Oh, like a comedian. Yeah. Oh, and cool. they were like teaching how to carve it and things like that. Like it's beautiful. It's a beautiful yeah. material. It is. It's very yeah. cool. It's malleable and there's something timeless about it. And I think it's a really cool... The only thing that bothered me about it, because I'm such an animal lover, was like buying animal product. Right. But I mean, this was, oh gosh, this was like seven or eight years ago that I was super into it. But now I love the idea of taking, like repurposing old things or finding yeah. maybe a used something and pulling it apart and re Great. remaking it using the material again. Um, what kind of but, stuff do you want to make? 
Well, right now my thing is hats. So I've been looking, I actually, um, one of our amazing costume ladies on Winona brought me to this really cool costume. Um, it's like a community of costumers in Calgary. So yeah. I went with her last weekend. And I just met a bunch of her friends. And it was so cool to just be in a space with a bunch of people who make things. Because costuming was actually something I really wanted to go into. I, almost I remember we talked about yeah. that. Yeah. So um, I think just being around those people who have those skills and, and just that creative environment, just being in the flow of those people, you sort of can absorb it and feed off of it a little bit. And I think for me, that's really it. It's that second yeah. thing of working with my hands and making something. And so I'm going to, I want to work with, um, I think the next thing I'm going to tackle is maybe taking a few old hats and learning how to reform them. So you sort of oh. steam them out and then you reshape them. And cool. then I want to do some sort of like embossing or burning or painting or dyeing or something yeah. with the fabric to sort of create a design. It's so weird. No. I don't know. You but know where we need to go. Though, is it's like, now I need a steamer and I, I need know. to buy all these dyes and how am I going to get them home after this is over? And so it just sort of goes, but I'm hoping to find a place where I can maybe rent a space and just go there a little bit. And yeah. I just need to get the the creativity out rather than and it can't be on writing or it, it doesn't do it for me yeah it just and I think it write. has to be yeah. like reachable too like because you could easily talk yourself out of pursuing this whole thing that we're talking about because it's too hard as you said it's, it's complicated not, like but what happens if it's just working with one hat and totally like working on on engraving it or working on branding it or whatever it is yeah. something really simple that you can actually do because yeah. I think because, you know, there's so often when people are like, oh, I want to paint, but I don't have any paints. And I don't have any paper. I'm like, you know what? Get a get the back of an envelope and some charcoal from a match. Yeah. And, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. let's make it happen. It carries away. Yeah. What and you know, think? obviously, I was just going to say that we obviously need to um, revisit the, where did we go last year? That um, Oh, the Ren Fair. The Renaissance <laughs> Fair. Because, I mean, that's your people with those hats and those are my people. Fantastic. They're my people. And they I don't know. Them. My yeah. thing is, it's tricky because my thing is so revol revolving around, like, I was saying to Matt yesterday, like, how much there is to do before you're allowed to be creative. So, like, yeah. there's, like, I'm working on a show right now that I'm so passionate about, but there's so much producing before I get to actually do act in it. Totally. Yeah. So, um, so while I'm pursuing, while I'm spinning that plate, you know, I'll, I'll improvise. Improvising always helps me, like, feel like, I'm myself again, just because it's uh -huh. interactive with the audience, and we do a lot. We do like once a month at least a show, and nice. So and yeah, and we have our podcast that we do too. So if ever I'm like, we need to improvise, I just bring in some people to our oh, yeah, apartment. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, it's so fun. Yeah. And do you find that even though it's kind of connected to performing, that it still creatively sort of um, fills your tank? I guess. Yeah, I mean it's different for different times, right? You're right. Mm -hmm. it, like, do you know what my friends and I do that I really love is we have a Bob Ross night. <laughs> That's awesome. It's the most fun. So we all, one of our friends, CJ, has all the supplies. So she brings the oils. We all bring our own canvases. So, and we just put them up on screen and follow along and all come up with these weird sunset <laughs> things. But it's really fun. And it's, it's a really, so like, fun. so that and, yeah, I, I don't know. Photography. I used to do so much photography. And when you talk about like things that make you happy, I'm like, I used to love it. Like I had a dark room and I don't do that anymore. Oh, Why yeah, don't I do that? And really into yeah, it. Yeah, I loved it. That's really cool. So I may try to start working on that more, but I, I mean, I love, I'm, I have such a passion for where we're going with firecracker department that there's yeah. always something to do. And yeah, yeah. You know, do you ever find, I mean, you're, you're talking about it a, a minute ago, but the, the, the list of, there's so much to do before you can be creative in the producing sense. But do you also find, I think for me, I learned one of the things is, is if I can get out of the house and go do the thing, it's a lot more likely that I will do the thing as opposed to being in the house at home where there's a million things. Cause the list never ends. I know the list of like, I got to fix that tap and then I got to go to the bank and we sort of need lettuce. And then maybe, you know, I got to like that, that list never goes away. So I almost feel like you have to schedule. Yeah. Office I'm going to be creative this afternoon because otherwise yeah. it just doesn't happen. 
Could you find a studio in Calgary to work in? That's that's sort of what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah. finding a second space or a studio space. Um, yeah, I'm gonna... even if it's just to get you going, and totally. then eventually you move back home. But you're right. Like I do. Yeah. I mean, that's why sometimes I go to like a coffee shop, and I just yeah. work from there because like, I like absolutely. the change of environment. The change of environment, and you're you're just sort of there to do. I mean. The computer is a hard one though because the internet is a vast vast black hole boy is it ever interesting I know. things i know um and i have so many ideas that i i don't want to let like whisper away too so mm -hmm. but you know what we got to go easy on ourselves too like you're working long days and yeah you gotta you know you're you you look healthy you like eating right and exercising and all that stuff too but yeah. It is, it's true, when you talk about filling your tank, like, what do you do to make that happen? What do you, yeah, what's the tank, what fills the, the creative, the, the muse tank? Because sometimes my muse is like, I don't want a script. I want a yeah. painting, a painting. Yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, sometimes the muse is just, mine is not interested in yeah. anything related to more, more work stuff. I don't know, but... Maybe when you're an artist as a living, it's sort of all, I think it's all, like, I think it's, it's important. I know it, for me anyways, I, I think I'm realizing more and more that I've, I've just hit that like burnout feeling too often. You've been going consistently too. Like there's, yeah. uh, you know. I mean, yes and no. I had, I had a little bit of downtime in Los Angeles last year, but that was also a year of like, because why not? I didn't come back. It was like, Oh fuck. Okay. What's going to happen? Everything I was thinking was going to happen with the next six months of my life is not happening anymore. Um, and I think th there I was really, um, I got really into like decorating our house and I was recovering chairs and like painting things. And so that was really fueling me. I was, yeah. funny, I was talking to my therapist and I was like, I just keep getting distracted with, with Pinterest and I'm like painting this credenza and like, who fucking cares? We're only going to be there for like a year. Like, why am I wasting my time on this? And she's like, yeah. well, obviously it's because you need to. Did like you're it like that? Obviously. The creativity. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously, idiot. Yeah. But <laughs> I think there was something to that, you know, I think. I think I, I, I've learned that I need to prioritize filling the tank more because then I hit burnout too soon. And, yeah. and then I start, I start begrudging having to work on an audition. And I don't want to get to a point where I feel like that. Yeah, yeah. You know? You know, that's so interesting. You said two things. Like, one, I have two such comments. One, I think it's really, it's, it's good to find a duo, too. Like, even, like, if you've got a project and you're like, how do I move this forward? Find somebody else that's like-minded so that you can yeah. sort of be accountable to each other. That's great. And one thing somebody suggested to me was, like, uh, set yourself a goal of making gifts for somebody. Oh, that's nice. Because then it's, like, yeah. even, like, I remember being in, like, a, in a funk and my friend was like, we'll just start making you Christmas gifts. And it was, like, April. And I'm like, I'm not going to start. But I started sewing because I, oh. like, I do a little bit of, like, sewy stuff. Cool. And it just took me away because a I was creating something for I was getting outside of my own head. Yeah, I was and you putting were others of first. That person and how much you love that person that you're making it. For. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it funny how sometimes we can do a million things for other people but not for ourselves? Yeah, my, isn't it um, funny how it becomes easier when it's for someone else? I know. I hate that. I know. I mean, we were just talking about this today on one of the um, the YouTube after show parties about saying like how do we make ourselves our friend? Like, I'm going to make mm -hmm. myself a gift, mm -hmm. you know, but if that's not really enough, like it's such a weird, it's such a weird thing. Yeah. I don't know. Do you, do you find that it's easier for you to motivate yourself when it's a deadline that someone else is counting on you for rather than yeah. the deadline you've made for yourself? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm yeah. so like, but that I also think like there's some discussion in the chatter about like depression too. Like that's helped me get out of depression because being responsible to somebody else yeah so again like this artist's way i've had that book on my shelf for 20 years but now that it's part of firecrack department i'm like oh i'm gonna do it every day i'm gonna do it oh so. yeah but and so maybe that's like like you said just having that buddy is the thing that you need to sort of kickstart the engine and yeah yeah that's great it's very cool so there is because i've seen you sort of saying you guys were going to be doing this and a journey as a group and so ever now are you guys having like check-in meetings yeah, every week. Uh, yeah. That's cool. It's really, we're going to do it again. I'm gonna, we're yeah. going to do it again because it's been so fun. I and I want to do it like, what's that? 
I should join you guys on the next round. Oh yeah, you really should. I mean, yeah. you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Do if you want to. But the other thing is, because I know you and I talk about writing projects. Like I want to do one that will take me through for a writing project. Yeah. So, and That's you know, we've had some pretty great ideas. I don't want those to just whisper away. I want mm -hmm. to honor. Yeah, we have, we gotta, yeah. I think but then also like, lock we're ourselves also in a cabin be... for a weekend and get that. Oh, that sounds done. super fun. Yeah. Just for the lock yourself in the cabin, part. cabin sort of thing. But yeah, like, let's still easy ourselves we're doing too. Face masks and having written oh. word, but whatever that would be fun. So many, so many good times. Uh, but there's also like, let's go easy on ourselves. Like you're super busy. Life is Dorothy coming and going. Busy. We're figuring it out, and um, uh, I do believe things move forward when they're supposed to. So, I think you might be like one of the top three busiest people I know. Um, maybe the, the top. I, I don't know how you balance all the things you're working on. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm really passionate about it. And I don't know, mm. busy. yeah, like, I mean, I take days off, too. I guess this is the difference is that I think I've set myself a goal with a firecracker department that has put me into the world of like a nine to five job almost. Wow. But I'm yeah. not getting paid for it. So it feels and it's also self motivated. So I'm really making it happen. And suddenly, I have to honor all the people that have stepped in to say, I want to be part of the firecracker department mm -hmm. by giving focus and giving engagement and giving energy to those things. So I don't, I think also when you start a company, the first five years are really intense and then, yeah, completely. And then I'll be just like sitting back. You're like, yeah. Oh, so many face masks. <laughs> so many face bags and so much sand. Yeah. yeah. That's, but I'm that's excited awesome. about all the things. I'm excited about the things that... I don't know how you, that... like, do it all. I'm always thinking about you every time I see something you come up with, with Firecracker. And I know I know you've told me before, you know, it's not just you and you've got all these amazing people working with you and stuff. But just, like, the logistics of a team. What is... My dog just, just, like, gave a cry. What? Hello? Is Rufus there? I've got it. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, is he okay? Oh, he wants to be with me. He can come here. Why don't you let him be with you? I think he thought, I think um, Matt was thinking it was going to be distracting, but come here, bud. Hi. Hi, Matt. Hi, come here. No, that's okay. Hi. Come on. No, yes. He He's a bit blind, so come here. Oh. There we go. Okay. There. Oh, Ruth. Hey, buddy. Well, I don't want to take any more of your time, Kat. This has no. been so great, and I so appreciate it. Come here. Come here. There was somebody, Kat. Oh, look, it's Bernie, too. It's Bernie. No, it's just dog hangout time. I love um, Kat, somebody in one of the comments says, does Kat know that this is live? Yeah. And, like, I think because we've had such a, like, a very authentic discussion, it just was like, does she know that she's... Yes. Sharing. Oh, yeah, I know. Don't worry. Guys, I, know. I love it. Yeah. I love it. You're such a, um, just such a real gal. So thank you. Oh, thanks, lady. It was, was really fun. nice to see your face. I miss I you. Know. I miss you, too. We'll, make... have to, we'll have to do something soon. Yeah. How long are you in Calgary for? Middle of May. Yeah. So You're long there. time. But maybe we'll figure something out. Yeah. We yeah. find you somewhere. Yeah. Well, I think about you all the time, and I just yeah. think you're... This is what I love about you is um is that I know you have such an artist heart that I know that you don't do things without really like getting into it like you even if it's something that you're like oh, I'm not really sure about this project you're still like I'm gonna find the thing that makes me feel like I'm an artist mm -hmm. so I really I really love that wow that's you. a really nice thing that you just said thank you very much I appreciate that a lot I'm a big fan I know everybody else here says they're a fan but I'm a really big fan. <laughs> I'm a real big yeah. fan. Well, I'm a big fan of you and the, all the amazing things that you do. You Thanks, pal. Inspire me every day. I don't know how you do it. I, I know you say you have the people, and but you're still doing so much. I was brought up by a workaholic. Ah, is that what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so no. you have a healthy work-life balance. You're it's like, about, um, I'm so motivated by purpose. And I feel like mm -hmm. this is a really good purpose. It's a great purpose. Yeah. And I love that you're part of it in any kind of way. I will be more one day. Anytime. You know, yeah. goes without saying. There's always a chair for you at the table. Thanks, love. I, I love you. I love you, too. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, Thanks for, guys joining, for us. joining us. First Sunday of the month. I don't know who the guest is going to be next month, but somebody fun. And somebody fun. Uh, this has been real fun. And I'm so glad you all 
entertainment. And let's do that thing. I'll start a little thing saying, your, I'll call it your perfect day on our Instagram. Okay. And get people to write their like yeah. perfect days. I'll, I'll write it. Um, should I write the steps to you? Yeah, send me the steps. Okay. And then I'll put like a little picture and we'll just say, what's your perfect day? Because I'm so curious about how to like um, turn that into action, right? So I love that this person took you through the idea of like a perfect day. But then what's one thing you can do? You know, like what's the one thing you can do after totally. being inspired? I think the only thing with the perfect day exercise is it's sort of not as effective if you know where you're going. Like if you know what the next question is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost wonder if you could release it in like, Steps. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's know. do that. Okay. Let's do like let a me, step thing. Let me like a it. weekly thing. Yeah. I don't know. Something. I like it. Then you can. All right. Go let's go. It. We'll take this offline and, and okay. help me put it through. Okay. Perfect. But I love it. If, it. if it generates somebody in taking like creative action, it's fantastic. That's awesome. I love that. All right. Bye, darling. Mwah. Mwah. Bye for now. Bye to Matt. Bye, everybody. Bye.